Hello guys, what you're about to see in this video is one free video from my new online course about Alpine.js, practical Alpine.js from scratch. Lately I've been quite fascinated by examples of Alpine.js that I've seen in the wild, both in Laravel projects and not necessarily in Laravel, and I've compiled practical examples, around 15 practical examples, like show hide something, models, progress bars, and a lot of that stuff with Alpine. And now you will see the first video of just explaining what Alpine.js is and comparing that to jQuery or to plain vanilla JS. If you want the full course, the link will be in the description below. And I will publish a few more free lessons on this YouTube channel in upcoming weeks from that course. And I hope you will like Alpine.js as much as I do. Now let's get into the video. So we start our journey with Alpine.js based on a very simple example, behavior comparison between Alpine.js versus plain vanilla JS and jQuery. Also, you could compare with frameworks like Vue.js or React, but I will not do that and I will explain why at the end of this video. So what is Alpine.js, plain.js and jQuery for the same behavior, which is just showing or hiding some content. For example, you toggle that and the contents show. You toggle back and it's hidden. Same thing with plain.js or jQuery. So I will show you in the code the same behavior and I will show you why Alpine is beneficial for such simple dynamic operations. To show you the code, I will actually not show the IDE or PHP Storm or VS Code or whatever. We just view source in the browser because it's HTML. So this is the source in my Chrome and all you need to use the Alpine is to load that from CDN and this is all the Alpine code. That's all you need. There's no script down below. There's no separate functions or something like that. But actually, let's start with the plain JS and jQuery. So how we used to do that? Show and hide operations back in the day. So first, plain JS, vanilla JS, without any frameworks. You have your ID on some element. You have your style, which may be CSS, but in this case, I used inline style for simplicity. And then you have on click and some function. And then that function is down below where you introduce some variables, for example, open or not. And then you have a function of changing the variables. And then based on those variables, you show or hide elements, referencing them by get element by ID and calling directly style display feature. So that was way back in the day of plain JavaScript. And then when jQuery came into the scene, it allowed us to perform some operations in a shorter way. So for example, instead of get element by ID and style display, you could just do ID and then toggle, something like this. And also for jQuery, there wasn't a need to define on click on some element. You could just define ID or class or something and put something like this. So ID click and then call some feature, some function of jQuery. But essentially, this is the same logic. So script down below with some kind of functions, variables and operations. And same with jQuery. It looks a bit longer just because there's clicks separated as well from HTML code here. And also side note, I know that those things could be accomplished without the open variable here. So for example, you could just toggle here and you don't define that toggle method here or toggle method here. But I just wanted to show you an example with scope specifically with some variables because they may affect other elements, not just toggling the contents show or hide, but also opening some sidebar, opening some other elements. So it's just a more complex behavior with a variable, not just toggling visually. Now Alpine is fundamentally different in such a way that it performs all its operation or it may perform all its operations inside of the same HTML element that you want to work with. And that's the main benefit of Alpine versus JS or jQuery. Let's take a look step by step. So first you install Alpine from CDN in this case. There are other ways to install, but this is probably the most simple one. We're using version 3 in this case. And then wherever you want to have that dynamic behavior, specifically on that HTML element, you define X data, which would be the scope of variables and methods for that particular HTML element. So then you don't need to look anywhere else in some kind of external script. You may divide that into external script and we will take a look at those more complex example at the end of this course. But generally the Alpine beauty is it's kind of like inline styles. So it's really readable what is happening inside. So you define X data with the variable open false 
and then you define add click, which is shorter version of the same syntax x dash on colon click. And then inside of here, you have a function, which in this case, the function is just one sentence. So you just define that in line. And then here x show is basically show or hide that element and open is a reference to the variable inside of the same scope x data. So this is just a very simplified example of the main usage of Alpine. So see, it's all happening inside of the same component. It kind of reminds me of Tailwind CSS philosophy with kind of inline styles. So when you write Tailwind, you write just classes and you don't really go to some external CSS file. So it doesn't take away your attention from writing code. Similar with Alpine, you just write all your logic kind of like inline styles or inline scripts with Alpine syntax like x dash something or add click or something. So it makes your workflow quicker to define small dynamic behaviors. Now, in the beginning of this video, I mentioned you can compare that Alpine JS framework to something like Vue or React, but in fact, it would be unfair comparison because Vue and React are bigger frameworks with components and a lot of more structure. So to perform something like this in Vue or React, you would need to create external components, define something in, for example, resources, JS app, JS in Laravel, then run npm commands, npm install, npm run dev, all the compilation and stuff. So that would be a total overkill for such a small behavior. So if your project contains just small dynamic behavior, as I mentioned previously, Alpine is a great fit for that. And throughout this course later, we will see many more examples of Alpine. So let's dive in.